and drier. Hate to see that there, Steph. Hopefully we can yeah. make some changes to keep them around. By the way, do you guys know that? And then the next morning you'd wake up and you'd have bruises all yeah. down your hip. That's when they're both going to wake oh, up with just goodness. bruises. Yeah. It's not just Oklahoma. Obviously, we're looking at the entire Red River Valley. And every once in a while, like yesterday, you have a little shower that's trying to work its way in, and then it just kind of fizzles. Yeah, it, it does nothing for you, really. Right. And it, the heat has just been relentless. And the problem is it's not just the afternoon temperatures, but it's also the morning temperatures. Mm -hmm. So you're just not getting this possibility of cooling off significantly. You can see you're also not alone. We've got millions of people with these highs that are up uh, around 200 million and that is going to continue. Here's why we've got high pressure centered over that portion of the country, and that's what's in control of the weather. All of these record highs, all these little dots are going to be possible record highs. So you can see some of the numbers that we've gotten here. Vegas, you could see a, a record high today, and we're all uh, breaching that triple digit mark. Heat advisories in place for middle portions of the country, and that is going to make it rough throughout the day today. Right now, we've got temperatures in the 70s, but the dew points also in the upper 60s and 70s. So you combine those things and it's already miserable starting your morning and then highs reaching up into the triple digits well into the 90s as well. Put all that together and you get a heat index well into the triple digits. So this is what you can expect as we move through the day. You're going to see those temperatures just continuing to go up in a city like I think that says Little Rock. I honestly, I can't see the monitor here. Little Rock. Yeah, is that Little Rock? Okay. Um, yeah, so a Little Rock, your, your heat index is going to be well into the triple digits. It is going to be another sweltering afternoon to Shreveport again, where we're going to have those triple digits. It's just... It's sweltering out there. I can't think of a, another word for that, Jordan. You need your monocle. I, I literally oh. was like, I don't, I don't know. I can't see anything right now. So let's go. Under there is because if it's just like a little bit, I, I'm just fine. But if it's like really banging, I'm really light sleeper though. So just about everything wakes me up. Now I will say this is the type of weather where if you had weekend plans this weekend and you don't feel like doing it anymore, it could provide you a good excuse to cancel. We've got that risk for tornadoes, isolated tornadoes for cities like Minneapolis. On the Torcon scale, it's a three out of 10. And what that means is, uh, you know, not a crazy high risk, but that risk is there. We're seeing the implications in the atmosphere that could lead to some rotation within these storms. So let's time out your Saturday for you. Here's lunchtime. So you'll notice if you want to get that morning run in, do it early. Get everything done that you want to do outdoors around Minneapolis, around the Twin Cities early on in the morning. Because once this starts around lunchtime, as we head through the afternoon, you're going to have waves of storms moving through. Now, eventually this begins to clear out and you're Sunday is going to be picture perfect there uh, across portions of Minnesota, but you got to get through Saturday first. Here's what we're looking at for Green Bay. You also have a torque on a low torque on two of 10, but it's still there. Even anytime there's a non zero risk, even one tornado uh, hitting your home, that's too many tornadoes, right? So you want to be cognizant and know where you go in your home to be safe. If you find yourself under a tornado warning now, Green Bay, the onset is going to be a little bit later in the day on Saturday. So you have a little while longer, but after we get to the afternoon, in and into the evening. That's when you see those storms start to move in. Outside of the tornado risk, we could also see some damaging wind gusts, some really large hail, as Steph was mentioning as well. So it is going to be a stormy weekend for some of us across the northern tier, Jordan. Speaking of storms, let's slide up. <laughs> You kick the covers off. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm not kidding. But <laughs> anyway, let's just move on. Let's go to travel now. Well, what's Felicia's love life like? <laughs> oh, well, it's... Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's interesting, at least. Let's talk about the uh, green bubbles here on the map. You can see that we're not really seeing a lot of uh, problems, and that's good news. But I will say we've got that risk for storms that we're going to move through as we head through your weekend. So if you are traveling this weekend, you could see those delays starting to add up for Pittsburgh, Dallas, New York looking just fine. Chicago, maybe a few delays. Minneapolis, same thing. So we're not seeing any crazy weather delays, but as we typically see during the summer, you could possibly get kind of a little bit of a delay from any of those storms that pop up for, say, a city like New Orleans. Your morning rush is going to have some storms around. That's going to continue into your afternoon. And as we've seen, this could certainly lead to some localized flooding here. New Orleans is like a bowl, so it floods pretty easily your afternoon rush. Now, here Here's the thing. It's not going to be raining and storming constantly across this region, but it will be enough that it's going to impact your day. Here's this morning. You can see it's quiet in Atlanta and Jacksonville.
Jacksonville as we head through your afternoon. Maybe a few storms for uh, a place like Atlanta, definitely for Pensacola. Memphis is just going to be hot and sunny for you. And then by this evening, we see those storms that are continuing to bubble around. It's just that summertime pattern, Jordan. When you get into the afternoon and you get that daytime heating at any given place across the southeast, you know a storm could bubble up. Yes, you do. All right, well, let's go to the conversation. You don't really want to be driving in that at all, but when you're driving one way and then the car driving the other way, put that splashes all of that water on your windshield and then you're like momentarily blind. It's terrifying. You can see the storms dashing southward overnight last night. These really packed a punch. We had hail reports, wind damage reports, flooding reports, and of course some of these storms leaving behind quite a bit of damage behind them. In Talladega, trees were uprooted and ended up on a house. In River Chase Galleria, a few trees were blown down around the Hoover area. One actually landed on a vehicle and in Eclectic, actually trees were blown down and then one home was on fire and they think that was due to lightning so you can see how quickly this just one complex of storms can change the outlook of the rest of your day now i will say we're seeing those power outage numbers across alabama drop significantly and that's fantastic news shout out to the um, guys and women out there working on the lines to get that power back on current outages are sitting around just over 14,700. but at the peak of outages last night you can see we were up around 60,000 as those storms blasted through most of those outages that are currently left are here in central Alabama where we really saw some of those storms packing a punch. We've still got that complex of storms diving southward over the I-10 corridor. You're getting some rain and storms out of that this morning in New Orleans and Hammond. And this is going to continue to dive toward the coast as we head through your morning. Are you planning on traveling? Well, if so, you came to the right spot. Happy Friday. Thanks for hanging out with us, whether you are traveling by air or by land or by sea. <laughs> We're going to tell you what you can expect, not really by sea, but by air and by land at least. Uh, scattered storms along that I-10 corridor. The Gulf Coast is going to have more of that same pattern that we've been seeing. The showers bubbling up, heavy rain at times. New Orleans, it's another day of on and off showers and storms for you. All around Lake Pontchartrain, Covington, you're getting in on that back toward Hammond as well. The chance for some scattered storms, you'll notice that it's kind of on and off throughout the day today. No given time will everyone be seeing storms, but they're certainly there on and off for everyone throughout the day. Now taking a look across the southeast, you'll notice we're starting out very warm in Memphis. Atlanta starting out just fine. Quiet in Jacksonville to start the day as well. Into the afternoon, we're staying pretty quiet and hot in Memphis and Jacksonville. But we'll start to see some of those storms bubbling up and moving through continuously today in Pensacola. By the later afternoon into the evening, scattered storms are bubbling up across the southeast. It's our same typical summertime pattern. And any one of those storms could put down some heavy rain to the Sunshine State scattered storms in the forecast and some of those storms will have some frequent lightning and of course the heavy downpours that you know all too well. So if South Florida is your destination for today or into the weekend, do know you're going to have some of that rain and storm action around. Guys, we are almost to the weekend. So yeah, we are packing our virtual.